Understanding your diesel engine oil analysis report. Now that you have received your diesel engine analysis report, what is it telling you? What do the numbers mean? Is my engine okay? There are many variables involved in interpreting oil analysis data, so we'll start with some of the basics. On your report, you will receive a spectrochemical readout of a battery of elements which represent the wear metals of your engine's components, elements associated with the presence of contamination, and elements associated with the oil's additive package. You will also receive data regarding the physical properties of your used oil sample. The wear that occurs in all equipment can be divided generally into three parts. A break-in period, a period of normal operation, and an end-of-life period. The basic concept can be seen in what is known as the bathtub curve. To maintain a long engine life and reduction of failures, it is imperative to explicitly follow the recommendations of your equipment's manufacturer regarding the proper preventative maintenance and oil change schedule and always use the recommended oil type and grade. Submitting a properly acquired oil sample at the time of your evenly distributed PM schedules will provide a trend of your equipment's condition over time. Any unusual fluctuations in the report's values can indicate a problem which can be addressed before a failure of a component occurs. Though there are many ways to interpret scientific data, Using a trend type analysis is arguably one of the most effective at predicting future problems. Another method used by some manufacturers, as well as analysts receiving a first-time sample, is referred to as a threshold analysis. Many manufacturers establish threshold limits by comparing data from known component failures to the data present in regular oil sampling. We will look at an example of some generalized threshold limits for engines, though keep in mind that these do not apply to every engine make and model from every manufacturer. Additionally, many factors affect the value seen on your report, such as the total time on the unit, the amount of time the oil has been in use, the size of the engine, the engine's load and type of operation, the amount of idling or stop-and-go driving, and the general habits of the driver or operator, just to name a few. A good lab analyst will interpret the data based upon many of these factors depending on the amount of information you can supply the laboratory. Let's examine the sources of the elements commonly measured in your oil analysis report. The elements are measured by a spectrometer and detect particles up to about 8 microns in size. These are invisible to the naked eye, and if you can see metallic particulate in your sample, the spectrometer cannot detect it. The elements can generally be divided into three categories. Wear metals, contaminants, and oil additives. Each element identified as a wear metal is present in one or more components within your engine. Iron is an abundant element within your engine and is typically sourced to the cylinders, crank, or camshaft. Chromium is typically associated with piston rings. Aluminum is typically sourced to the pistons and or turbocharger. Nickel is typically associated with the valve system. Lead is typically associated with bearings and or bushings. Copper is typically associated with the main connecting rod bearings and very commonly associated with the oil cooler. Tin is typically present as a bearing or bushing alloy metal. Silver and titanium are not commonly seen in most diesel engines. However, titanium has become more commonly present in recent years as part of an oil's additive formulation. Elements associated with common contaminants are silicon, boron, sodium, and potassium. However, 
These elements can commonly appear from sources other than contamination and proper interpretation of these elements is vital to determine their sources. Silicon as a contaminant is typically associated with an abrasive form of dirt or sand. Silicon may also be present in a non-abrasive form such as the compound silicone which is present in engine sealants. The abrasive forms of silicon produce a particular pattern of wear in an engine and would be considered a contaminant under these conditions. Sodium and or potassium and or boron are potential indicators of the presence of coolant contamination. When these elements are present in abundant quantities, the lab will typically perform an additional chemical test to confirm the presence of glycol. Boron, however, is very commonly seen as an oil additive and is not a definite indicator of the presence of coolant. Though, increases in boron may be seen along with elevated values of sodium and potassium that are associated with a coolant leak. The remaining elements seen on your report are typically considered oil additives. The most abundant additive elements are phosphorus and zinc, which are present in a compound known as zinc dialkyl dithiophosphate, or ZDDP for short, which acts as an anti-wear substance. Additionally, calcium and or magnesium will be present in abundant quantities for their detergent and or dispersant properties. Typically, one will be in a greater quantity than the other. The remaining elements in the oil additive sections are less commonly present and may also exist from other sources. Elements such as vanadium and antimony, or antimony in some parts of the world, can be sourced to catalysts present in rare fuels. Molybdenum, sometimes shortened to molly, may be present either as a friction reducer or as a wear metal present in high-performance piston rings though more commonly present in the piston rings of high-performance gasoline-powered racing engines. Barium may be present in small amounts as a detergent. Oil analysis reports will typically designate wear metals and contaminants as normal, abnormal, or critical. The chart listed here is a generalized guideline for threshold limits seen at the end of your manufacturer's recommended oil drain interval. This cannot be considered to be applicable to every diesel engine, and you are strongly encouraged to contact your engine's manufacturer for the proper threshold limits for your specific engine make and model. This document can be downloaded and printed at the link in the comments section below. Determinations of wear in an engine can be indicated by the presence of either an elevated single element, or more commonly, a combination of particular elements. For example, a combination of iron, chromium, and aluminum commonly indicate wear in the cylinder assembly since the cylinder sleeve is an iron alloy component, the rings are a chromium alloy component, and the pistons are an aluminum alloy component. And all three of these components operate in concert in the same area and are in close proximity with one another. This combination is commonly seen when dirt ingestion is observed. The main or connecting rod bearings are composed of an alloy of copper, lead, and tin, which when seen in combination with each other indicate a wear problem with the main bearings. Lead and copper are seen in much higher quantities than the tin due to the alloy composition. This combination is commonly observed when a coolant leak is present. Often, just a single element is elevated or a combination of unrelated elements may be elevated, indicating other potential issues which should be noted by the laboratory in the comments section of your report. Sometimes an element may be elevated but is no cause for concern. For example, an elevated level of silicon with no associated increase in wear may be considered a form of non-abrasive silicon. And although it may be marked as abnormal on your report, there will be no recommended maintenance action necessary. Copper is typically seen elevated without the presence of any bearing alloy metals and is an indication of passivation within the oil cooler.
This may also be marked as abnormal on your report, but would include no recommended action. Copper originating from the oil cooler is an inevitable consequence of heat exchange. In addition to providing an elemental readout, your lab will also report some physical properties of the oil. Most commonly, you will be provided the results of a kinematic viscosity test performed at 100 degrees Celsius with a value reported in centistokes. Each oil viscosity grade, or weight, has an acceptable range in which the result must conform to be considered within specification. A result which is lower than the acceptable specification may be an indicator of the presence of fuel diluting the sample, which will prompt the laboratory to perform a test to determine the percentage of fuel present. It may also indicate a mixture of different oil grades, or be the result of reporting the wrong viscosity grade to the laboratory. A result which is higher than the acceptable specification may be an indicator of exposure to heat, presence of high quantities of soot, an extended oil drain interval, usage of an oil additive, and also may indicate a mixture of different oil grades or be the result of reporting the wrong viscosity grade to the laboratory. The amount of soot present in the oil will also be reported. The results are measured in light absorption units and is typically considered abnormal at a value of 1.5 and critical at 2.5 or greater. The threshold of detection for many soot meters is 2.5 and any value exceeding this threshold is an indicator of an excessive soot issue. Soot is comprised of abrasive particles and will also contribute to higher viscosities once the oil can no longer effectively disperse the soot particles. Water content will also be reported by percent volume. Values of 0.1% to 0.3% are commonly the results of condensation. Values exceeding this amount could also indicate an accumulation of condensation particularly in vehicles which frequently do not reach their maximum operating temperature before being shut down, or could be an indicator of a more serious issue such as coolant intrusion. Your report may also include infrared analysis to determine the presence of oxidation, nitration, and or sulfation products. Elevated values are commonly associated with exposure to heat, extended oil drain intervals, or operational issues such as blow-by. Elevated values are commonly seen alongside elevated viscosities and or soot content. Laboratories may also offer a test which measures the remaining alkaline reserve in your oil called TBN, a shortening of the phrase total base number. Each diesel engine oil originates with a different TBN value, so your oil's product specification sheet should be consulted to determine how much of the alkaline reserve in your used oil sample has depleted. In general, TBN values for any diesel engine oil that are below 3.0 are considered low, and at this point the alkaline reserve will begin to deplete rapidly. Low TBN values signal the end of the oil's useful service life. Low TBN values will commonly be seen in conjunction with elevated viscosities, oxidation, and nitration products. Your oil analysis report will provide recommendations based upon not only the laboratory results, but on other factors such as the engine make and model, the total time on the unit, the time the oil has been in service, and many other aspects. Interpretation of all of this data can be complex, but an experienced analyst will be able to provide the appropriate comments and or recommendations based upon the results of your used oil sample. Though this basic tutorial should answer and address a good portion of your report, you may still be left with questions that either may not have been addressed here or were not included in the recommendations by your laboratory. Your laboratory should welcome further discussion of the results of your report and you should feel free to contact them at any time.